Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, podcast with myself, Andrew Marr. I am the Director of Clinical Service Delivery here at Workplace Options. And today I have with me uh, James Sussex. Um, James, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, Andrew, and uh, thanks for having us on. Um, I've been with Workplace Options for the last few years as both a clinician and uh, clinical team lead. Uh, I'm currently uh, working outside of the organisation as well as uh, as a police officer, um, and uh, we're here today to talk about burnout. Yeah, thanks for that. And I mean, burnout is becoming much more prevalent now, really, in the in the workspace, especially since uh, the pandemic. And what are some of the challenges that, that you're facing or, or you've noticed, James, over the past couple of years? Yeah, I think I think that's uh, an important point there, Andrew, really, because, you know, last few years we're looking at sort of a post a post pandemic kind of world. You know, the last sort of couple of years since 2020, 2021, really, um, things have changed and things have changed in a pretty big way. And uh, one of those is the work environment, you know, companies that were uh, that were not remote or, or didn't have remote experience all of a sudden had to go remote. And things have been sort of slow going, coming back. And I, I think it's been a bit of a, a bumpy ride overall. And just talking from experience with different client groups and, uh, you know, just working with different people, you know, it seems that the burnout at the moment is is a lot more prevalent, if that makes sense, um, you know, across across all the sectors, I, I would say, all sectors. And you know, I think one of the biggest challenges is kind of differentiating between burnout, anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. there's huge overlap, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose, yeah, it might be good for us to spend a moment maybe unpicking that a little bit together. I mean, even even stress there, a lot of people would relate stress with burnout, but, you know, while I might be stressed or there might be a, a lot of stress, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm, that I'm, that I'm burnt out at all, you know. Um, for me, stress is about, I suppose, it, there's, there's too much of something, you know, I'm overworked or there's a lot of pressure, there's a big demand on me physically, maybe even emotionally. Um, but, but burnout is a little bit the opposite for me. It's about kind of that there's, there's not enough, you know, it, yeah. I'm feeling, I might feel empty. I feel a little bit devoid. My motivation might be gone. Um, and I suppose it's a real slow burner and it's hard to spot initially. What would yeah. you add to that, James? Oh yeah. I, I think, yeah, a hundred percent. I would agree with that, you know, hard to spot and, and it's a little bit like, you know, out there sort of, as I sort of say, you know, street language around mental health. We might mm-hmm. say in one sentence, you know, I feel um, depressed, burned out, anxious, stressed, exhausted, all in one sentence. And, you know, actually get to the bottom of what's going on is is quite hard sometimes because, you know, because it is hard to differentiate and it is hard to spot. And, and I think... I think that moment when, you know, things are already spilling over, that's when we notice. So it's usually in retrospect that we, that we know that something isn't right, basically. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then it's a process of kind of becoming your own investigator and, and, you know, trying to figure out what it is. But as we tend to say these things when we're feeling already over the red line, if that makes sense. Yeah, when it, when it's nearly kind of too late, uh, and I suppose another thing that comes up for me in relation to burnout is, you know, it's not your fault. You know, uh, a lot of people take the blame, or, or they they feel that it's kind of a failure in a way. But but burnout is really more organisational. Uh, wouldn't you? It's really job related. Would you agree with that, James? Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing I think that that really differentiates burnout Mm -hmm. from anxiety and depression in particular, because it is, it is about, you know, the occupational stuff. And, you know, of course, there's a, when we look at things through a really holistic kind of lens, you know, of course, work stuff is going to impact on your personal life anyway. 
And, uh, you know, the more that things ramp up at work or the more that things become stressful at work, you know, things might start to fall off at home as well um, and vice versa. But really burnout leads with, yeah, the, uh, the the workplace stuff. And we're talking about, you know, we're talking about workload. We're even talking about, you know, how a workplace responds to global catastrophe. Some of the things mm-hmm. that we've that we've been seeing, you know, since the pandemic even. And, uh, you know, we're now in a place where in a post pandemic world, we've got major global conflicts going on, uh, major financial global issue um you know and these things all all impact in the way a workplace response impacts and uh and i think that you know the the post-pandemic world has been challenging because this sense of going back to how things were before the pandemic it just kind of feels like it hasn't happened if you know what i mean yeah no absolutely and i mean uh, in relation to burnout, um, being work related, I, I think a lot of it comes from, you know, as well us not feeling like we're not autonomous anymore. You know, we're, we're nearly a slave, nearly a slave to our, nearly a slave to our work. And when we don't have that, um, autonomy, it kind of leads to that place of, I, I've no real drive. Uh, work can be a little bit boring. And for me, Work without meaning is a really challenging place to be. So, so for me in my in my job right now, while I might be stressed, there's meaning and purpose to it. And I'm sure your job is pretty much the same. A lot of stress, a lot of high adrenaline stuff in your job, but it's the meaning and purpose kind of keeps us engaged and maybe afloat. I think for me, that's one of the pieces that keeps me afloat anyway. What kind of things keep you going, James, or away from that burnout by going to that place of burnout yeah t- totally i think you, you know that's uh some good ones there and, and i you know for me it's, it's holding an awareness of of burnout you know because i think holding an awareness of, of how you do things and and an awareness of uh of where your red line is is really important and mm-hmm. you know I've, in the past i've had a tendency to go more towards that red line and even beyond that and some of those things coming in, uh, a sense of exhaustion, a sense of maybe um, being cynical about things. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about, you know, we're talking about distance then from from meaning. And uh, and for me, one of the most important questions is why? Simply why? Mm-hmm. Why is it that I'm doing what I'm doing? And, you know, if I've lost sight of that, or if that's a hard question to answer, then it, it might be that I'm in more of a burnout kind of place. Because that that why for me is is the meaning of what mm-hmm. I do, and uh, you know if you lose sight of that, it might be that we need to just take a step back and reassess why is it that you know we've lost that meaning or that connection to the meaning, and uh, and you know then in comes a bit of self care and a bit of self compassion mm-hmm. as well, you know because you can't really you can't really do anything if you don't look after yourself if that makes sense. Yeah. And without having awareness that you need to look after yourself or to notice what's going on, it's, it's, it's a slippery slope. But I'd, I'd like to raise just, just another point. And I suppose, you know, the way we've been talking, we've been talking a lot there about the individual, but this, I suppose the organization as well and the culture in an organization, I think has a lot to do with burnout as well. So while I might be quite self-aware and while I might know what fuels me or where I get my meaning, if the culture of the organization isn't healthy or, um, you know, maybe the expectations are too high, maybe there's a huge demand on production, etc., that can be a very challenging environment to to work in and to manage our burnout or to manage the impact upon ourselves. Um, so I suppose organizations need to be mindful that, you know, it's people, and the people in the organizations that actually drive it and, and move it forward. And if we lose sight of that, we, we really lose everything in the end, I think. Maybe that's, uh, um, uh, too much of a generalization, but what are your thoughts around the organizational piece, James? Yeah, I think it's a really important piece. Yeah, you know, it's a really important piece because, of course, the, the, the bottom line of an organization is, is people. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, 
the sh- stack in the shelves, so to speak, or on the shop floor. Uh, or if you are, you know, at the sort of higher echelons of, of executive management, you know, it's, it's all people. And if you've got a trend of people becoming burned out, then culture shifts inside the workplace and, and other things. If things are unmanageable, if the task before the organization becomes unmanageable, then it sort of rolls downhill and, and everybody kind of is involved then in this kind of toxic kind of culture, if that makes sense. And, you know, I think uh, some of the main causes that have been identified in, uh, you know, in burnout in the individual in relation to the organisation are things like, you know, unmanageable workloads or mm-hmm. um, lack of support in the workplace, mm-hmm. for example. Um, you know, we, we're talking about we're talking about dissonance here. We're talking about uh, the opposite of congruency. We're talking about misaligned values. So. Yeah. You know, if it, if a, an organization is saying one thing and doing another, then what you've got in between is a huge chasm of just this, this expanse where we're not being congruent really. And we know enough that, you know, to say that when people are incongruent, then there's this huge kind of, um, jarring that kind of takes place where we're not quite happy with our, with our position in life. And, uh, and so misalignment in, in, in values in the workplace. And with that, you know, unfair treatment, um, for different reasons and toxic behaviors. You now all, all of this leads to toxic leadership behaviors essentially. So keeping these things in check and keeping our leadership behaviors in check is, is really key, I, I believe. Yeah, for sure. And again, I mean, it's about, it's about awareness around that. And I mean, for teams or employees in organizations, it, it is um, quite a quite a challenging time because there's also, as you mentioned earlier on, the stresses outside in the world, you know, uh, the cost of living crisis, et cetera, and um, lots of other stresses too. So lifestyle um, is really important to give that balance, to give that kind of self-care as well to, um, you know, Simple things to, to, to get enough sleep, to, you know, be able to come home and turn off the phone or the emails and to, to have family time to, to step away. Um, because without that, we get swamped and overwhelmed also. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I suppose it's worth pointing out just, some of some of the you know signs or signs of burnout as well for anyone who might be listening you know there's kind of we've touched off a good few of them there you know we we talk about the physical ones of being um tired exhausted as you said um you know there can also be so a lot loss of appetite headache things like that um yeah then there's i suppose emotional and behavioral signs to James, isn't there? I mean, behavioural could be a little bit of withdrawal or procrastinating. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and, and I totally agree with that. You know, it's, it's almost like uh, there's different domains where these issues can occur, if that makes sense. And, um, you know, physical is probably the most obvious one, I would say, because mm-hmm. on the the sort of uh, thicker end of the wedge, you know, on the sharp end of things, you, you, the most extreme you know, we're talking about physical issues, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, mm-hmm. you know, over time. Because it is possible, it is possible to soldier on through. Yes. And, you know, sometimes that's what we fall back on is doing what we know best, which is let's crack on and keep going. But actually that could be driving us deeper into into burnout, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe just before we we finish up, uh, just in this brief uh, chat, I mean, to kind of look look forward about like maybe what some what organisations can do or what what we can do maybe as individuals to kind of foster uh, maybe a more psychologically safe environment where we can where we can thrive. Um, uh, how might how might we do that uh, as an organisation or as individuals? What kind of things do you think we should be looking for? 
I think, uh, well, I think awareness is key and, and awareness, I think, you know, as we've been saying is, is, uh, is fostered through education. And, and I think now more than ever, now more than before the pandemic, you know, we, uh, we need that. I think we need some awareness of, of how things impact us. You know, we, let's look at, you know, some of the organization. I mean, talking about the, um, the police and the military and, mm-hmm. and other, mm-hmm. uh, other uh, other organisations, as you as you know yourself, Andrew, you know, is uh, we have um, trauma and, and risk incident teams and awareness and peer support, you know, trim support, this sort of thing. And perhaps it's time to start thinking about some of this in relation to burnout. You know, yes, we have um, mental health first aid has made a, a real sort of come mm-hmm. up in the last few years. But maybe something specific around, you know, uh, burnout awareness and what is burnout? How do we define burnout and how can we sort of, you know, manage each other and, 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 and peer led support, if that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. I mean, I know a lot of organizations that do have that peer led support and they really do find it, um, re- really helpful because there's a, that's probably where the psychological safety comes, talking to others that have similar experiences or know the culture and they can feel really supported in that, in that space. So, I mean, uh, uh, any final thoughts? I mean, uh, our time is nearly out. Uh, do you have any final thoughts or something to wrap up with? Yeah, I think, I think just, you know, now it's, now is the time. Essentially, is, mm. is my is my thinking. Now is the time to start talking about this more widely. Uh, you know, we're looking at last last three years, burnouts increased every single year. The rate of burnout. This is across all demographics, and you know, a, a, a lot of countries are now reporting the same trend. So, this is a global issue. This is a real global issue, and. You know, we're looking at, at rates between 40 and 50 percent burnout between, you know, all demographics. And this, this huge numbers we're seeing, huge numbers. And the differentiation between sectors is kind of melting away. So this is becoming almost the next kind of pandemic, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that might sound dramatic, but actually, my I think my my final point on this is that you know now is the time for everybody to start having conversations about this yeah that's great um yeah i I, i'd agree with that i mean preventing burnout or we're not here scaremongering but you know i I think it is going to be one of the most significant factors that determines whether an organization survives or thrives as we go forward into the into the next decade really you know and it my final thought, I suppose, it's it's always been the same, but it's really about recognizing individuals as people within a company and not as a resource and minding their well-being. You know, I, I think that's that's key and that's the responsibility of all organizations and all sectors to keep that in focus. So thanks very much for joining me here today, James. Yeah, thanks, with- Andrew. Yeah, we leave it there. We'll talk again soon. Lovely. Take care. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.